Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today we're going to learn about the color wheel and it's really fun and exciting and we're going to put a fun little animal on top of our uh, color wheel paper when we're all done. And you can choose of course any animal you'd like uh, but we are going to be using a white background to the animal so think of some animal that you would like to do. My kids uh, in my class did a lot of rabbits and bunnies since it's around Easter time but of course you can put any animal you'd like. I had some of my friends in my classes put um, cats and dogs, and one did a polar bear. But I'll show you some of the examples of the kids' work toward the end of the video. So be sure you see the kids' examples of what they did. And I did this with um, my first and second, no, my yeah, my first and second graders, um, and they really, really enjoyed this lesson. So what we do is we start off with the lightest color or the lightest value on our color wheel, and that is yellow. And what I have my students do is I have my students mark down uh, two fingers from the top with their paintbrush, and we go into yellow. Let me bring it up here so you can see how I'm actually stirring this in. And we go ahead, mark down two fingers, swirl gently into the yellow, and I put a little mark here and mark down on the other side, right here. You can see I spilt my water a little bit, which is okay. This is just thin paper, so you can see how it's turning dark, which is all right. Sometimes it bothers students, but when it turns dark like that, um, it'll dry clear, so you don't have to worry about that. So I went ahead and I painted across long strokes, a horizontal line. Now I'm just gonna go back and fill this in back and forth. If you don't have paint at home, you could always use crayons or I also did some of these lessons with water-soluble chalk, and I also did some classes in Payon, which all come out uh, really well. So whatever you have at home is fine, uh, but we're learning about the correct order. So the next order on the color wheel from yellow is orange. So I go ahead, wash my brush real good. I measure down two fingers, put a little line with my orange, and now you want to make sure that this is straight coming across. Some of my students didn't do this measurement and they ended up with real skinny on one side and real long on the other. You want it to be pretty equal distance and you want this to be horizontal. You don't want it to be a diagonal line. And of course, the more you stir gently into your color, the darker the color will be. Since this is a tempera cake, I can get real dark which is very similar to a watercolor. The more you stir with watercolor, the darker your watercolors will be. And you can, if you go across quickly like this, you'll get a nice straight line and let the hairs drag behind. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the next color. Now the colors that are in between red and yellow were the orange that I just painted. And yellow's a primary color my next color here, red, is a primary color. And when you're mixing two primary colors, measure down your two, you're gonna end up with a secondary color, and that's what orange is. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this quick. And you just wanna follow right along with your color wheel. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint that. The next color is going to be if we look up here on my palette, I'll show you. We're gonna to go to the purple, because that's between red and blue. And then I'm gonna go ahead to the blue next, and then I'm gonna do my green right in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you our next step. Okay, now that we're done, we're gonna go on to our next step, and I'm gonna show you some student examples, and then I also wanna show you um, an example with the chalk as well. Here is the one that I did with the chalk, and I used a 9 by 11 sheet of paper here. And we started off with yellow, of course, and we went down in the chronological order with the rainbow, and the chalk had some different values, more values of blues, blue-green, so we added them in here. And then with the water-soluble chalk, once you've done that, you just simply take your brush, oops, I didn't wash it good. You just simply take your brush, and it makes your watercolor right in here. I'll show you on the purple, it really shows well with that purple. And it just melts it into paint. So that's what some of my students have done. 
and so it just gives it a different effect and then you can actually blend them together like the rainbow where the two edges meet together so that's how how we did our chalk ones let me show you some student examples this one was with pay on and if you start off at the top and go on down some students didn't quite do two fingers here. Some of them got a little bit smaller. So if you have a lot of white space on the end, I just had my students just continue with the rainbow from green, go right back to the top of the color wheel and continue with your yellow, orange, red all over again so that you just have it uh, like almost a double rainbow coming through. Here's another student example where they actually started off with yellow and went around the other side of, we went to the left side of the color wheel, but some students started with the right side of the color wheel and went this way. So it really doesn't really matter on the end how you do it, uh, just so long as it's in the correct order. But we started off here, and this student actually did thicker than two fingers. And so some of them even did it so that it was so thick that they had no room for green, which is okay. As long as you have your rainbow or most of the rainbow in order, it's all right. Um, but now we're going to go ahead and do the bunny. So to do the bunny right here, what I do is I give my kids a piece of uh, half a sheet of paper. And this is uh, four and a half by nine or five and a half by nine. It's a half a sheet of uh Uh, nine by 11 sheet of paper, yeah. So five and a half, five and a half by nine. And so then what we do is we go ahead and we draw the arch at the top, which is going to be the top of the bunny here. So you can see how I cut that out right here, the top of the bunny. So you just round your corners. Let me show you up here how to do it. You start off by I'll just round it up here. From corner to corner, I'm gonna jump down. I'm almost to the center here of this top. And I'm just gonna do a curve right to the corner and curve it here. And then I'm gonna cut that part out. Line in here. Now another way to do this is just cut off the corners like that and then round. I usually just freehand things. Round here and round here. It's just a little bit easier. Cut it off straight. And you see I have a little bit of corner to round. Round here and round here. And that's gonna be the top part of the bunny. My background paper is nine by 11. That's what I give them, a sheet of that. And then if, I usually I tear a lot of my paper, so if you have any rough edges, you can trim those off if you want to. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tr trim a little bit under two fingers wide, which is about an inch. Two fingers wide is about an inch. I'm going to cut off an inch at the bottom, and I'm going to cut off another inch at the bottom. So I have my curve, which is forming the bunny head, and then these two pieces are going to be forming the bunny ears. And what I do for the ears is you can make them pointed on one end, or you can round them however you'd like. Now for my students, what I did was I had them um, cut out from scrap paper other things to add on. If they wanted a little nose, some ears, however they wanted to decorate it, they could cut those out with scrap papers. You could option to paint it as well. So that's up to you if you want to add detail with paint. And then you basically add a very small amount of glue on the back of each ear. And you could do some fun techniques. If you just glue one ear and then you take the other one rub it in, stick it the way you like it. They could be straight up, they could be bent, however you want to design your bunny. Rub that in. Now your ears, you can even give a little twist. You can wrap them around 
pencils if you want a little curl to it. Gives them a little curl. Some kids even bent one, maybe just bend it. That's up to you. How you want to decorate or straight up. Here, this one, this example it just straight up. And then you go ahead and you attach it with a little bit of glue. Now here's my big picture. You go ahead and attach it with a little bit of glue to the bottom. And you can have your ears, however you'd like. And then you can decorate your eyes, nose, and mouth. And with the scrap paper, I just go ahead and take bits of it, trim it. If you want a little nose, you're gonna just cut out triangles. So if you have a flat edge on the bottom, just do a diagonal, turn it, diagonal, and you've got a triangle. Triangles are pretty easy. You can even use the corner of a piece of paper to cut a triangle and slice it right off. Right there, and you got your triangle. There's a color paper right there. So you can decorate it any way you want and have fun creating your rainbow in a color theory. We stuck on little Google eyes too. And then you could use a circle for the tail or you could even use a cotton ball, which I gave my students. And now I'm gonna go ahead and show you, just put a little dot of glue here for the cotton ball and stick your cotton ball on and you got a cute little bunny. Some kids are gonna put the cotton ball ooh, right on the back, some creative kids. So it's up to you how you wanna decorate it and have fun. And, and you don't necessarily have to, I'll show you some of those examples that my kids did. Instead of making it a bunny, they did a, you know, you use triangle ears, it could be a puppy. And those are the triangles I actually cut off. So you got a cute puppy, that's how you put your ears, like that, and then make your little puppy face. Or you could do a cat. You want some cat ears like that. There you go, you got a cat, so it's how you do the ears. Rounded, rounded ears are a little bear. Uh, and stay tuned and I'll go ahead and show you all my um, kids' examples. And have fun, let me know in the comments how yours came out. Mm -hmm.